representing the classes Agnatha, Chondrichthys, and Osteichthys. So we're going to start out with the Agnatha. The word Agnatha comes from the Greek words Agnathos, meaning without jaws. This means that Agnatha are jawless fish. Hagfish and lamprey are the most popular species. They have eel-like bodies. Hagfish are scaleless fish, while lamprey are well known for their funnel-shaped mouth. Taxonomy. Agnatha are a part of the phylum chordata and the subphylum vertebrata. Two of the classes are Hyperoardia and Myxini. Hyperoardia include the lamprey and endiolepis, which is an extinct group, and Myxini include hagfish and Eptotretus, polytrema, an extinct group. Evolution. Agnatha evolved from sessile filter feeding ancestors that came from shallow fresh or brackish water. Members of the Agnatha class are probably the earliest vertebrates. Scientists have found fossils of the Agnatha species from the late Cambrian period that occurred 500 million years ago. Over time, Agnatha developed more flattened heads as well as a longer tail. They also adapted to life in salt water. One interesting extinct ancestor of the Agnathan is the Anaspida. They live during the Silurian and Devonian periods. They are classically regarded as ancestors of the lamprey and are small, streamlined fishes with bodies and heads covered in scales. Environment and Ecology They live in ocean, cold ocean waters in the northern and southern hemispheres. They live on muddy seafloors in large groups. Agnatha eat marine worms and small invertebrates. Anatomy and Physiology The body of Agnathans are covered in skin. Lampreys have two large eyes, while hagfish have poorly developed eyes. They do not have dermal or epidermal scales. Hagfish have many small openings on the side of their body called slime glands. And as you can see here, here are the slime glands. And then here are the external gill opening and the mouth. The hagfish's slime glands are used as a defense mecha mechanism against predators. This video will show a hagfish that is being attacked by a shark. When the shark bites, the agnatha will shoot slime into the shark's pores and clog them. Circulatory system. The circulatory system differs in both the lamprey and the hagfish. The lamprey circulatory system is a closed circulatory system with arteries and veins. They have a two-chambered heart that consists of an atrium that receives the blood and a ventricle that pumps the blood into the arteries. Deoxygenated blood goes through the gill capillaries to become oxygenated. The deoxygenated blood travels through the heart into the body capillaries where it spreads the oxygen blood oxygen blood around the body. The circulatory system of hagfish um, has four hearts, known as the branchial, which serves as the main pump, and the caudal, portal, and cardinal hearts that serve as accessory pumps. The respiratory system. Agnatha breathe by sucking in water through their mouth or nostril. The water passes through the nasopharyngeal duct and into the pharynx which is a membrane-lined cavity behind the nose and the mouth that connects them to the esophagus. They release the water through their gills. Here is the pharynx. Lamprey and hagfish have a very restricted endocrine system. Scientists are still studying their endocrine system and therefore not much information is known about this particular system in Agnatha. Nervous system. Agnatha have a brain that is connected to their spinal cord. They have a peripheral nervous system that includes 8 to 10 pairs of cranial nerves and a spinal nerves. Agnatha have a pineal eye located on the top of their head that senses daylight. The digestive system. Agnathans are ectothermic, which means that they do not regulate their own body temperature. Agnathan metabolism is slow in cold water, and therefore, they do not eat very much. Agnatha have no distinct stomach, but rather a long gut. Agnathan are limited to what they eat because they do not have jaws. They suck bodily fluids with their sucker-like mouth for easy attachment to prey. The excretory system. 
Agnathan's excretory system mainly relies on their kidneys. The kidneys send the waste out through the cloaca and keeps the amount of salt in their body regulated. When the fish is in salt water, the fish's gills work to keep the salt out. The, the muscular and locomotive system. Agnatha swim in a rippling motion by moving their tail back and forth. Agnatha have segmented myotomes, or a group of muscles in which the muscle fibers are arranged in muscle units. The muscle units consist of white fibers that are placed centrally and red fibers that surround the, the white fibers as a superficial layer. The central fibers within the muscle units are typically twitch fibers, which help them endure swimming long distances. The skeletal system. Agnatha have a cartilaginous skeleton. Agnatha develop a notochord as an adult, which is a support rod that runs along the back of the fish, which is why scientists categorize them under vertebrates. Hagfish do not have a skeleton, but they do have a skull made of cartilage. The reproductive system. Most species of Agnatha are hermaphrodites, which means that they have both female and male sex organs or sexual characteristics. They can produce gametes normally associated with both male and female sexes. Not much is known about their actual reproductive process. The development in lampreys is external fertilization, where female fish lay the eggs and the male fish spread the sperm over the eggs. Scientists are still re researching the hagfish reproductive system. The life cycle. Hagfish start out as a yolk-filled egg that is about 2 centimeters long and eventually hatch into miniature adults. They eventually develop a notochord which serves as a cartilaginous skeleton rod that supports their body. The lamprey life cycle is much more complex. Lamprey use external fertilization. They start out as an egg that is about 1 millimeter long and then it eventually hatches into a blind worm-like animal called an amocete. It buries itself in silt. After three to six years, when it has grown to about 10 centimeters, the lamprey undergoes a radical metamorphosis in which their eyes complete their development and their upper lip transforms into a suctorial disc. Here's an ammo seat. Interesting facts. One interesting fact about the hagfish is that they have 10 to 12 rows of sharp teeth. They have to eat large chunks of flesh or suck the blood from prey because they do not have jaws. Hagfish can also go months without eating. Importance to humans. Agnatha are important to us because they clean the bottom of the oceans, um, such as the dead carcasses. But we are affecting its environment with pollution and with the emerging eel market in which there is a high demand for hagfish skin. We will be moving on to the class chondrichthys. The word chondrichthys originates from the Greek word chondros, which means cartilaginous fish. Based on these basic characteristics, can you guess which animals I am referring to? Chondrichthys are jawed vertebrates and it has paired fins, paired nostrils, placoid scales, two chambered hearts, and most importantly, a skeleton made out of cartilage. If you guessed sharks or rays, you'd be correct. As previously mentioned by Jocelyn, this class also belongs to the phylum Chordata and the subphylum Vertebrata. The subclasses are Elasmobranchi and Holocephaly. Elasmobranchi contains rays, skates, and sharks, and Holocephaly contains chimeras, which are also known as ghost sharks, among other nicknames. Evolution of Chondrichthys Chondrichthians have changed little in over 300 million years. The earliest evidence of chondrichthys is in the fossil record from the Devonian period. Teeth and placoid scales are most often found in fossil records. They were abundant and diverse during the Carboniferous and Permian period. Then many became extinct at the end of that period, which greatly reduced diversity. Many chondrichthians, however, have evolved sophisticated adaptations that have made them successful predators over a wide range of habitats. Environment of chondrichthys. Chondrichthians are found throughout the Earth's five oceans, which are Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, Arctic, and Southern. And they can also be found in freshwater environments, for example, the bull shark can be found in Amazon rivers. 
Within these rivers, they can be found in benthic or pelagic zones. Benthic zones means the layers that are closer to the bottom and chimeras can be found there. On the other hand, pelagic zones means free water and the layers that are closer to the surface. Rays and shark species can be found there as well. Ecology of chondrichthyes. The left side describes what chondrichthians prey on and the right side is a list of its predators. Sharks can be considered to be apex predators because they are normally at the top of the food chain and they have few natural predators. They can range from eating any moving sea creature to being filter eaters based on their species. Rays and skates eat bottom dwelling creatures such as crabs, clams, oysters, and also they eat shrimp. Chimeras eat clams, fish, and crustaceans. These, crust these chondrichthians are eaten by killer whales, other sharks, sea lions, humans, and carnivorous fish. And this is an example of a great white shark eating a sea lion. Basic body plan. Chondrichthians have paired fins, paired nars, scales, two chambered hearts, and most importantly, a skeleton made out of cartilage instead of bone, as previously mentioned. The placoid skin is rough sandpaper texture and the teeth are really the only hard thing in the body. That is why they are found mostly in fossils. It also is bilateral symmetry, which means when the body can be divided along a plane and the left and the right mirror each other. Circulatory system. They have a closed circulatory system and the process is similar to the lampreys that Jocelyn had mentioned. Chondrichthians have red muscles which generate heat which allows their body temperature to be higher than the surrounding water. As the red muscle functions, it produces heat that warms up the blood which circulates through the red muscles back to the heart and through the veins. Respiratory system. All chondrichthians breathe through five to seven pairs of gills based on the species. Water enters the gill chambers through the mouth. They pump water over to the gills by opening and closing their mouths. Blood from the gill filaments absorbs oxygen from the water. Some sharks must swim constantly in order to keep oxygen-rich water flowing over their gills and ray species can actively pump water through their spiracles, which is a small hole found behind each eye and out through their gills. Endocrine system. Similarly to the Agnatha, not much is known about the chondrichthian endocrinology and scientists are still researching. They have simple brains, eight to 10 pairs of cranial nerves, spinal cords, and spinal nerves. Sharks have extremely acute senses. They have sharp vision but cannot distinguish color. The sense of smell is highly developed and probably the principle of locating their prey and guiding towards it. The lateral line system is a microscopic organ that is sensitive to changes in water pressure that enables the shark to detect minor vibrations. Sharks can also hear with a pair of auditory glands. Digestive system. Most chondrichthians are carnivores and they swallow their prey whole or tear apart the prey's flesh. Their esophagus is short and wide and they have a U-shaped stomach that leads to a spiral valve, which is a lower part of the digestive tract. It is twisted and coiled to increase the surface area and increase nutrition absorption. The digestive tract leads to a rectum and the cloaca, which is a common opening of urinary digestive and reproductive systems. Excretory system. It functions in getting rid of the body nitrogen and other waste. It also regulates the amount of water and ions present in the body fluids. 
cartilaginous fishes excrete urea, which is a chemical found in urine as a nitrogen waste. Muscular and locomotor system. The chondrichthyans swim by contracting red muscles, which are oriented by white muscles. The red muscles are aerobic and they are used for cruising slowly, while the white muscles are anaerobic and it functions in sudden bursts of speed. Skeletal system. Chondrichthyans have skeletons made out of cartilage and connective tissue. The cartilage is flexible and durable, yet it is half the normal density of bone. A shark cranium is a single cartilaginous block which encloses the brain, and the jaws are loosely attached to it. An example of cartilage found in a human is nose and ears. Reductive systems. Chondrichthyan mouse have a pelvic clasper and it is a specialized organ used in mating to transfer a sperm to the fertilized female egg. Internal fertilization happens. The most common development is ovoviviparous. It is when the egg hatches inside the female, but they are not fed by placenta. So they feed off of each other and unfertilized eggs. Therefore, a few pups survive. Another option is viviparous. The eggs hatch inside the female body as well, but this time they are fed by placenta, so the litters range from 2 to 20 or more pups. And another option is oviparous. It is external fertilization of eggs. They hatch if they are not eaten by predators and they are not guarded by parents. Life cycle. The average lifespan is 20 to 30 years. The gestation period is 9 to 22 months, which is the fetal development period from the time of conception until birth. The number of offsprings range from 1 to 100, and baby sharks are called pups, as mentioned before. Importance to humans. Other than providing Shark Week and thriller movies, sharks are among the oldest animals with modern immune systems one that is similar to ours but way more sophisticated and proved beneficial to humans. Researchers have integrated adaptations into human antibodies resulting in increased stability that can lead to improved therapy and diagnosis of human diseases. And humans primarily impact upon the chondrichthians through overfishing. Interesting facts. An electric ray has about 8 to 250 volts. There is 440 known shark species, 630 known ray and skate species, 52 known chimerian species. The shark whale is the largest living, living shark, which is 60 feet, and the smallest shark is about 8 inches. We'll be moving on to osteichthyes, and they are known as bony fish. They have jaws and paired fins, as well as mucous glands on their skin. Taxonomy. Osteichthyes are a part of the phylum Chordata, and two of the most popular classes are Sarcopterygii and Actinopterygii. Sarcopterygii include the lungfish and the coelacanth. The Actinopterygii include salmon, airy. The nearest common ancestor of all the osteichthyes are the tetrapods, and Hox clusters are a group of related genes that specify the region of the body plan of an embryo along the head tail axis of animals. Bony fish inhabit almost every body of water. They are found in tropical, temperate, and polar seas, as well as virtually all freshwater environments. Different species of fish are adapted for different habitats. Rocky shores, coral reefs, kelp forests, rivers and streams, lakes and ponds, under sea ice, the deep sea, and other environments of fresh salt and brackish water. Osteichthyes can eat plankton, worms, mussels, clams, crustaceans, and more. As far as factors that affect distribution goes, some species of osteichthyes can tolerate higher levels of salinity more than others. Basic body plan. Osteichthyes have bone instead of cartilage, and they have paired, 
pectoral and pelvic as well as dorsal and anal fins. Osteichthyes have an operculum. It is a bony flap of skin over the gills to protect them. The operculum opens and closes to help the fish breathe when they are not swimming. The circulatory system. The circulatory system of bony fish is rather complicated. They have a two-chambered heart consisting of an atrium, which is each of two upper cavities of the heart from which blood is passed on to the ventricle, and the ventricle that is one of two main chambers of the heart, the left or the right chamber. The venous side of the heart is followed by an enlarged chamber called sinus venosus. The arterial side of the heart is followed by a muscular cavity called the bulbous arteriosus. The sinus venosus receives the oxygen-depleted blood from the body. There is a valve in the sinus venosus that opens into the atrium. Once the atrium receives the oxygen-depleted blood, it pumps it into the ventricle. Because the ventricle is the largest and most muscular chamber of the heart, when filled with blood, it constricts and forces it through the bulbous arteriosus. The blood will then flow through the bulbous arteriosus into the ventral aorta. From the ventral aorta, blood flows to the gill filaments where it is oxygenated. The oxygenated blood then flows from the gill filaments to the organs of the head and the body. The respiratory system of a bony fish starts off with water entering through the gill chamber and through the fish's mouth and coming in contact with gill filaments. The more that the gills touch the water, the greater chance of extracting oxygen and returning carbon dioxide. The water leaves through the gills opening under the operculum, and some fishes have adaptations of getting water from air, such as lungfish return to the surface to get air. Endocrine system. Endocrine glands of increasing complexities are found in osteichthyes, and fish endocrinology is limited limited to the work on its influence on chromatophores, action of sex cells, function of pituitary and thyroid, and control on migration. Nervous system. Bony fish have a brain that consists of three sections the forebrain, the midbrain, and the hindbrain. They also have a spinal cord. The forebrain is responsible for the bony fish's ability to smell. So if a fish has an enlarged forebrain, it has a better sense of smell. The midbrain is responsible for vision, learning, and motor responses. So if a fish is blind, it has a reduced midbrain. And the hindbrain is responsible for coordinating movements, muscle tone, and balance. So if a fish is fast swimming, it has an enlarged hindbrain. Osteichthyes also have a lateral line that runs along the side of their body. It is a series of sensory organs, and it helps the bony fish sense vibrations and water pressure, and it helps them navigate and locate their prey. The digestive system. The esophagus of bony fish is short but can be expanded so that large objects can be swallowed. The esophagus walls are layered with muscle. Gastric glands release substances that break down food to prepare it for digestion. The pancreas secretes enzymes into the intestine for digestion. Most of the food absorption takes place in the intestine. The intestine varies in bony fish. Plant-eating bony fish have long coiled intestines. Carnivorous bony fish have short intestines. Waste is filtered through their kidney. The fish that live in salty water tend to drink a lot of water, and they release a small amount of concentrated urine. The fish that live in non-salt water, they drink less water, but release a large amount of diluted urine. They store waste in blood until the kidneys filter them out, and the waste passes along a thin, mucus-covered fecal package. The muscular and locomotive system. They have a swim bladder to help them float in the water. Their dorsal and anal fins provide steering and stability, while the pectoral and pelvic fins help the fish to turn, balance, and stop. The muscle of the tail consists of a series of muscle blocks called myotomes. The connective tissue called myosepta separates the myotomes. The jaw muscles usually consist of adductor muscles that close the jaw and open it. Adductor muscles also move the fins away from and close to the body.
Their skeleton is made out of bone and cartilage. The vertebral column, ribs, jaws, cranium, and intramuscular bones make up their skeleton. The skeleton gives them structure, protection, a system, and it is the site of blood cell production. The reproductive system. Osteichthyes have a cyclic reproduction, meaning that there is a certain duration to their cycles, which is called spawning. Some cycles are as short as four weeks, others are as long as years. Some species are hermaphrodites, which means they have both male and female characteristics and sex organs. The eggs of bony fish are usually left in the water to be fertilized by sperm. The reproductive organs are called gonads. Female osteichthyes have two ovaries that produce eggs and the males have two testes that produce sperm. They reproduce by external fertilization. They release their eggs and sperm into the water. Depending on the species of fish, some reproduce many times a year and others reproduce only once a year until they die. Many bony fish start to reproduce when there is a change in the duration of sunlight, which is known as photoperiod, or a change in temperature. Most species give no care to their eggs and some species hide or guard their eggs. After a young is released, there is little to no parental care. Interesting facts about osteichthyes. There are more than 20,000 species of bony fish on Earth. Each of the different species have different characteristics. For example, the lungfish have traits of amphibians, and a scorpionfish has stronger venom than a cobra. Importance to humans. Fish is important to humans as a nutrient source of low-fat, high-quality protein. It is also a good source of omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, calcium, and potassium, which are essential for healthy living. And again, humans impact the osteichthyes by pollution, 